Hello all, and welcome to the Amazon Open Search YouTube channel. My name is Miles Jordan, and I'm a solutions architect specializing in enterprise solutions here at AWS. In my free time, I enjoy reading, gaming, and tinkering with open source software. Today, we'll be discussing pagination within the Amazon Open Search service. So, let's get started. What is pagination, and why is it important? Well, simply put, pagination is the way for us to control the amount of results returned from our open search query. This is important because we can improve the performance of our search applications as well as provide a better user experience. Without pagination, we run the risk of our queries returning too many documents. Let's take a second to imagine that we're searching for a particular item on Amazon.com. Imagine if all the results returned were on a single web page. Not only would that lead to slower search, but also a poor user experience. Now that we understand what pagination is and why it's important, Let's discuss implementation. There are four main methods of implementation. We have the from and size method, scroll, search after, and point in time. Now let's go through each one and I'll explain what they are and how they work. From and size uses two arguments called from and size. From represents which document number to start at, and size represents the number of documents that we want returned from our query. Two things to take note of. First, open search is zero index. That means that the first document is actually at position zero. So if we want to grab the second document, we will update the from size to be one. Next, document number is not the same as document ID. The document ID is a unique identifier for a document in a specific open search index. The document number just represents the position in which that document was returned from an open search query. The from and size method is useful in use cases where we want to list a fixed number of items, such as listing products on an e-commerce website. Next, let's talk about the scroll method. The scroll method uses an argument called scroll. What the scroll argument does is create a context window to tell OpenSearch how long to keep scroll. Essentially, we're telling OpenSearch to return as many documents as possible in a specific time window. We can specify the amount of time in seconds, minutes, hours, or even days. The scroll method is useful we have long running jobs, such as if we're doing some type of machine learning job. It is not useful for frequent short term queries. Now let's move on. As you've probably guessed, the search after method uses an argument called search after. What search after does is use the previous page results to get the next page of results. This can only be used whenever we're doing sorting alongside of our query. For an example, let's say that we have a movie index and we want to find all the movies that came out after 2006. Well, with the search after method, we can find the movies in chronological order. Search after is a great for use cases such as those where we want to list items in chronological order. Last but not least, let's talk about point in time. What point in time does is creates a snapshot of our index and allows us to search on an older and frozen data set. And what this does is actually provide consistent performance for our live data sets. So with the exception of scroll, all of our previous methods may provide inconsistent results for live data set. So now that we have an understanding of the different methods of pagination, let's actually go through some examples. I'll be using Python in a Jupyter Notebook environment along with the sample movie index to showcase these examples. So let's move on. Okay, welcome to the Jupyter Notebook environment. I have already taken the liberty of connecting to our Amazon open search domain and indexing a sample movie data set. So let's jump right into it. We'll be starting with the from and size method. And if you remember from the theory, we have two parameters. We have from, which represents which document number to start at. And we have size, which represents the number of documents we want returned from our open search query. So breaking down this code block, we're going to start with our query body. So essentially the query that we're sending to open search, we're doing a simple match query for the title of dark Knight, And then we send that query alongside our size parameter and our front parameter. And then finally, we just have some formatting code to print out the results in a nice, easy to, to digest way. Let's actually look what running this code will look like. Let's change this two to a zero because remember, open search is zero index. So if we want the first value, we actually have to start with zero. So if we run this code, we should see two documents starting with the first one. You see here we get the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises. And if we want to get two more movies, then we will simply change the from from zero back to two. And you see here we get the Dark Sky, the Dark City and Dark Sky. What if we wanted to again get that first value? We wanted a size of three or we want to return three documents. We we'll simply just change the size to three. And you see here, we get the dark, the dark night, the dark night rises and dark city all in one page. So as we go through these examples, I will go through a code breakdown and I will also provide that same code in a Python function just for repeatability and simplicity and to also show that we can dynamically adjust these values. So for here, I have the from and size method just in function form. And I'm gonna run that, but you see here, I have a size of three and I want three pages. 
And you see here by changing that size to three, again, we get the dark night, the dark night rises and dark city. And then our next one, we get dark skies, dark shadows and zero dark 30 and so forth. So now that we have an understanding of the from and size method, let's go on to our scroll method. And remember this creates a context window that tells OpenSearch to return as many results as possible in a specified amount of time. So again, starting with our search body, we have a similar query, except this time we have a size of two. So remember the scroll method can return unlimited results. For demo purposes, we're just gonna keep this at two. And whenever we actually send our search to OpenSearch, we have that scroll argument and we have a value of one S. And remember, we need to specify how long to keep this context window open or open search and this can be seconds minutes days or hours in this case one s means one second and for each subsequent query that we turn to open search we need to specify the scroll id so after we create that context we need to grab that scroll id and that's what this line here does and for each subsequent call we have that scroll id and then finally this code here is just for formatting purposes now to display what's actually going to print let's go ahead and move on to our functions so basically what we've seen in this code block we have here and then we have our formatting piece and now we're actually going to run it and as you can see here, we get a similar values from the from and size method, the dark night, the dark night rises, and so forth. Next, let's talk about our search after method. The query is pretty similar to the ones that we had before, except now, remember, search after is only usable if we're applying sorting to the query as well. So we have a sort value long here, where all we're looking for is we're sorting by year in ascending order. And if we move on, so here we're doing just a simple, simple query. There's no search after method just yet. We actually have to first query open search to get that search after value. And that's what we're doing here. Here I have some formatting and we'll see when I actually run the code block, what that is there for. And we simply repeat this for another, for the subsequent pages. And then lastly, we have some formatting. So let's run this code block and see what we get. So I wanted to print the search after value to show you what that would look like. So the first search after value is we're looking for all movies after 2008. And then for the second, we're looking for all movies after 2012. So remember, we didn't have a search value for that first query. That's because we just wanted to grab the first result. And you can see here that we have our movies in yearly order. So we have one that came out in 98, 2008, and so forth. Same thing here. We just have it in function form just for simplicity and repeatability. And let's actually run it. You see here, we get the same thing. Now let's move on to discuss our final method of pagination. And that's going to be the point in time. And remember, it's the preferred method of pagination when used in tandem with search after. And this is, again, provides consistent performance when it comes to forwards and backwards for our live data sets. And this is because we actually create a snapshot of our index to query again. So if you see here, this looks just like our search after query. But before that, we create a point in time snapshot. So similar to our scroll method, we say how long that we want this snapshot to be alive for. And again, it can be seconds, minutes, days, or hours. In this case, we're going to do a time of one minute. And before we send our query, we're going to update it with this point in time ID. Then after that, it's pretty similar to our search after method where we send our query, get our search after value, return it for every subsequent query. And then at the end, we just make sure to delete our point in time. So let's run it. And then let's run our functions to see our function versions to actually print the results. And as you can see here, we get similar results. And again, this is gonna be useful for live data sets. So if we were continuously updating this index, we will still get the same results. So that's all we have for the pagination video today. Thank you so much for joining me on this exploration of pagination within the Amazon Open Search Service. We've covered why it's essential for performance and user experience and explored the four key methods of implementation. Remember, choosing the right method depends on your specific use case. For further learning, please visit the official documentation, which I have linked in the description below. And please explore other resources available on the Amazon Open Search YouTube channel. Thank you again for watching.